Hi everybody, it's Jenny. I'm really on a roll today. This is like my third video in the one day. I ordered quite a few uh, decks about a week or so ago. I was treating myself to some holiday goodies and I received three of them in today. They're all sort of um, druidic in nature, Celtic and, or druidic. And this particular deck, I'm so excited to get. This is the Green Man Tree Oracle. Uh, a sort of a limited production item and it's dated 2003. This particular box set is from Barnes & Noble. I don't believe it's available to buy on their website any longer. You have to find it like on eBay. So this is the Green Man Tree Oracle. Artwork by Will Worthington. You'll know him best for his uh, Druidcraft Tarot, the Greenwood Tarot, the Wildwood Tarot, and he did also the Celtic Plant Oracle, the Celtic Animal Oracle, and this is an older tree oracle. So this also came, when it was first released, it came out in a box set that included a uh, Green Man figure. And obviously I wasn't sure what I was getting when I bought it. I think I bought it on uh, from the Amazon marketplace and they had the stock picture which showed that but this did not come with that which is fine I don't really need that but I'm excited to get the uh, the set with the books and the card or the book and the cards so let's take the lid off the box here this is a hard cardboard box A little difficult to get the cover off. It does not have any cutouts on the side. Inside we find the Green Man Tree Oracle book, Ancient Wisdom from the Green Wood, and behind the book are the cards. So let's take a quick look at the book. I've already flipped through this book a little bit. Uh, it tells about reading the woods, divination and tree lore, uh, a little bit about the green man in uh, legend and myth, and then we go to chapter three which is reading the trees and it goes through um, the different trees that made up the uh, druidic alphabet and that's a subject I have to learn a little more information about. Then we go to turning the leaves or receiving the wisdom of the woods or how to do your readings. And we do have, when you get to the section about the cards, you do have a little uh, image of each card, a little thumbnail. So it's a nice book. Each page has this green man image. You can see the face there. All the cards have faces in the theme of the Green Man. There's a few sample readings, as I was mentioning earlier. Heartwood Spread, Sample Reading Jack, Mini Leaved Spread, Growing with the Oracle. For further reading, a long list of references resources about trees and the green man. So it's really a very fact-filled book. Notes from the artist. As an artist and a druid, the natural world has always been a great source of inspiration for my creative work, and so it is natural that the green man has become a very special personal icon. For many years now, I have dreamed of producing a series of paintings depicting the trees and the ancient Oum alphabet as green men. Although the green man has appeared in many ages and many cultures, the great flowering of carvings occurred on the Gothic cathedrals of the Middle Ages, so it seemed appropriate to frame the cards in a Gothic arch. The method I chose to produce the original paintings also harks back to those times when artists and craftsmen worked with purely natural materials. It seemed fit, in honor of the subject matter, to start with a panel of wood. This was then coated in many layers of gesso made from chalk and animal glue and then sanded to produce a gorgeous marble-like surface. Onto this surface the images were painted in egg tempera, 
pure pigment mixed with the yolk of an egg as a binder. This produces a paint that is rich and silky to use and which dries instantly with a sumptuous matte finish. Although there is no substitute for direct contact with the healing and nourishing power of nature, many of us find this difficult in our fast modern world. I hope that my paintings help you to connect as they have helped me in painting them with that potent and enigmatic spirit of all that is green, the green man. From Will Worthington, April 2003. So let me I'd like to take, there's just 25 cards, so I'd like to take you through each of them and do something a little different. I'd like to read a little bit about the essence of each card as we go through them. Now the cards have a beautiful green card back. They are flexible, they're kind of thick. The cardstock is not that great, but it is a mass-produced thing. A mass-produced deck. I noticed when I took it out of the box, you know, the edges were a little bit rough, although this is not new. I don't think it's been used. If it was used, it was lightly used. But you can see um, the stock itself is not what I would call wonderful card stock. So each, each card, as he noted, is framed in a gothic arch, and every tree image has a green man quality to it. Alrighty, so there is the first card, Birch. The Birch is seen as protective, guarding children against the weakness that may overshadow them in early life. At one time, however, it was used to whip children, hence Birching, although this probably reflects the need to drive out evil spirits than a desire to punish. In the same way, Birch twigs were used to beat the bounds or boundaries of a piece of land, those who were born in a place needed to know the exact dimensions of their land, so were shown where the boundaries lay. This beating also helped to drive out evil spirits from a particular tract of land. Birch was also the wood traditionally used to make broomsticks for witches, who claimed that the light within the wood helped them to fly. The birch's bright trunk and silvery shade has ensured a lasting association with bodies of light, for sun, moon, and stars all appear in the traditions relating to it. The birch has a title, The Lady of the Woods, which is a reflection of its willowy and fluid form. Oh, very interesting. And the divinatory meaning for birch, or green man wisdom, a good beginning leads to a good conclusion. All right, so let's move along to the next tree, which is Rowan. The wisdom associated with this card is safe in the knowledge of protection. The Rowan is especially sacred among the Celts. It was given great honor by the Druids and in Ireland is still known as Fidna Druad or the Druids tree. The Druids planted Rowan trees along with oaks and ash in the sacred groves where they gathered to worship. Throughout Ireland it was also believed that if a Rowan was planted anywhere on the land it was protected from harm so long as the tree was healthy and well cared for. This tradition is still kept alive in parts of Europe, where rowan trees are found growing close to the houses or churchyards, and where sprigs of rowan pinned above a door frame are said to keep those away with evil intent. So it's considered as powerful protection against witchcraft, and to bind a piece of red thread around a twig or rowan can turn aside the strongest spell. Okay, that's really a beautiful card. Next we have Alder. The Alder was especially re revered for its magical properties. Irish myth records that the first man was born from this tree, just as the first woman was born from the Rowan. Perhaps we may see here how the division occurred between the protective aspect of the Rowan, masculine, and the defensive nature of the alder, feminine. And you can see the face image there in the tree. This artwork is really fabulous. Now 
we move on to the willow. Oh, I didn't tell you the divinatory meaning of the alder. Let's see, the divinatory meaning of the alder is defense keeps clear the territory. So it's protection and defense. The willow, the divinatory meaning is from harmony comes inspiration. So there's the willow. From harmony comes inspiration. One of the oldest trees in Europe, the willow has a set of ancient and well-defined traditions. It loves water and generally grows close to rivers and streams, which is reflected in its Celtic name. Sal means near and lis water. A tree that grows by the water. This element was always seen as a means of crossing between the worlds and journeys were taken by boat, either in actuality or vision, or to other world in search of inspiration and wisdom. One genus of the tree known as the sallow has boat shaped leaves, which may explain this association. And the next card is ash. Really beautiful. The divinatory meaning is strength grows from deep roots. Look at the roots coming out in that drawing. Wonderful. And you can see the face also. I love these cards. They're great. According to the Greek mythographer the Hesiod, the first man was born from the ash tree. Thereafter, at the birth of a baby, it was customary to plant an ash tree, and the state of the tree served as an indicator of that person's pers of that growing person's health and strength. Interestingly, the ash was sacred to Arius, the Greek god of war, which suggests that humanity's warrior aspect was recognized as an essential part of his overall strength. The dual powers of the ash are its strength and its rootedness and wisdom. And both of these aspects are clearly reflected in this tree's mythology. Three of the five sacred trees of Ireland are ash trees. Okay, next we're going to move to the hawthorn. There's the card for the hawthorn. Look at the stones in the background. The divinatory meaning, or the green man wisdom, as this book calls it, challenge opens the way before us. The Hawthorne's history is inextricably li linked with traditional May Day celebrations. At the time of the old Celtic festival of Beltane, the beginning of summer was celebrated with wildness and passion in the 19th century and in some days to this and in some areas to this day may queens chosen from the most beautiful village maidens were dressed in white and crowned with hawthorn blossoms so there's a lot of information on each tree i can't read all of it to you but i'll give you the divinatory meaning and a little bit of the lore associated with that tree so challenge opens the way before us. Next we come to the oak, one of my favorite trees here in California, the oak. And the green man wisdom or divinatory meaning is, no one knows their fate. The oak has been called the first among trees, not surprisingly since it is often the tallest and most imposing of any grove. In Britain it's frequently called the royal oak, while to the druids, whose name means oak wisdom, it was the central tree of their mysteries, acknowledged in Ireland as the sacred, as the tree sacred to the Dagda, father god of Celtic tradition, who, like the oak itself, never failed to give hospitality to all who asked for it. Appearance of the oak in myth and folklore are so numerous that it was clearly recognized as a sacred tree from the earliest times. 
It was held in the highest honor by the Norse people and the Greeks, for whom the oak represented Thor and Zeus, respectively. Next we see Holly. The wisdom associated with this card is energy fuels every action. Holly is one of the most ancient plants associated with midwinter. Its evergreen leaves and scarlet berries suggest both its immortal status and its connection with the sacredness of blood, and for this reason it was considered one of the strongest trees connected with protection. To wear a sprig of holly ensured the wearer against the wiles of the fairy people, while a holly wreath fixed over the front door made sure nothing untoward could enter. However, it was considered unlucky to cut a holly branch without asking the tree's permission, and even then it should be removed by only pulling off already broken branches. Interesting. The holly has strong divinatory traditions. In the north of Britain, young women who wished to dream of their future husbands would pick three sprigs of the smooth leaf plant and place these beneath their pillows in a cloth tied with nine knots. Usually, the husband-to-be would be seen clearly in the ensuing dream. Next comes hazel. Divinatory meaning, seek wisdom in the depths. For the Celts, the hazel is deeply connected with wisdom, and the fruit of the tree, known as the food of the gods, has an important place in the iconography of learning. Irish tradition speaks of the sacred salmon, who swim in a pool surrounded by nine hazel trees. When these trees dropped their nuts into the water below, the salmon ate them and then carried them back to the sea and back in their annual spawning run. The endless cycle was seen as a metaphor for the passing of wisdom from age to age and from person to person. Salmon were already regarded as sacred in their own right and the ingesting of the fruit of wisdom made them doubly precious. Celtic literature contains many descriptions of heroes who when they ate the flesh of the salmon, thereby imbibed wisdom, and so set them apart from the rest of humanity. Apple, and the divinatory meaning associated with the apple is, vision lights the way ahead. Apples are associated with immortality and the paradise of the other world. In Greek myth, the gardens of the Hesperides were said to contain a mighty golden apple tree, goddess Gia's gift to her daughter Hera on her marriage to Zeus. The fruit of this tree could restore life to the dead and heal those in need of it. It was guarded by a serpent and by nine goddesses who formed a protective ring about it and sang sweet songs. Hercules had to steal three apples from the tree as one of his twelve labors, though this caused such anger among the gods that they were later returned. In Celtic myth, the hero Lug was dispatched to collect apples from a tree of light that grew in the other world. Biblical tradition turned many of the beliefs regarding the sacredness of the apple and its fruit upside down by making the apple tree in the Garden of Eden not only a source of wisdom but also a contributory factor in the fall of Adam and Eve. Beneath this lies a fear of the visionary gifts of the fruit which give people too much knowledge. There's a little more information in here about wassailing, which would be interesting, but I, for the interest of time, I'm going to have to just skip through these a little faster. Blackberry, the divinatory meaning is gather in what is dearest to you. The oldest reference to this letter describe it as a vine, which is a curious idea since there were no native vines in the Celtic world. Most commentators see the blackberry as being nearest in nature to the vine, both growing rampantly wherever they are found and spreading across the ground or over walls with equal ease. In some cultures, the blackberry is said to be the bush into which the angel Lucifer fell when he was thrown out of heaven. This has led to the blackberry having a less friendly set of associations. So-called blackberry winters are said to be particularly harsh, for instance. Blackberries are deemed to be the property of the fairy people. The hardiness of the blackberry builds a connection, connection with the deep-rootedness of harvest customs. So there's the blackberry. Next we have ivy. The divinatory meaning is strength comes from accepting support. 
the form and shape of ivy, together with its spiraling growth pattern, have caused the shrub to be associated with the movements of the stars and constellations. Ivy has long been held to be sacred to the moon, just as holly is seen to be devoted to the sun. The old Christmas carol, The Holly and the Ivy, preserves this ancient belief, expressing hostility or rivalry between the two plants. On the one level, this is because the ivy is considered to be essentially female and the holly essentially male, and from this idea, the plants have come to be seen as representing the opposition of the sexes. Very interesting. Ivy, beautiful. Next we have the fern. Divinatory meaning is truth is the preserver of life. Like some of the others in this sequence, the fern is not really a tree at all. However, its magical properties are well attested, and we should bear in mind that our modern arboreal categories have not always been as they are now. The fern is seen first of all as a preserver, offering shelter to those in need, although it has other properties as well. Belief in its magical power derived from the idea that the fern bloomed and produced seed for a brief period during the night of the summer solstice, and that according to a 17th century herbal, it carries its seeds, which are almost invisible to the naked eye, on the back of the leaf. In an attempt to explain this phenomenon, the fern was ascribed other wondrous properties. For instance, anyone who succeeded in collecting the seeds could become invisible, and those courageous few often went into the woods at midnight to seek them, though it was said that evil spirits kept at bay anyone who searched for the flowering fern. Interesting. Fern. Next we have the blackthorn. The divinatory meaning of the blackthorn is magic is everywhere. The blackthorn's magical power is well attested. Wizards used to carry staffs made from blackthorn, and because it suggests a link with magic, in parts of Ireland it is still seen as unlucky to carry a staff made from the wood. It is also said to blossom at midnight on Christmas Eve, which associates the blackthorn with that night and is also seen as a link to the holy Glastonbury thorn, another Christmas blossomer. It's the sister plant to the hawthorn and places where they grew next to each other were thought to be particularly magical. Like all thorny plants, the black thorn had a darker side, and like the blackberry, it reminds us of the hedge of thorns preventing, preventing the prince from reaching Sleeping Beauty. Okay, next comes, next comes the elder. The divinatory meaning of elder is from sacrifice comes restoration. The elder has strong associations with witchcraft and transformation in Britain. Witches were rather fond of turning themselves into elders, a transformation that seemed to give them even greater strength. One story tells of an elder witch who turned a Danish king and his followers into stone for daring to challenge her. These can still be seen today in the form of the Rollright stones in Oxfordshire, and some intriguing customs have grown up around them. And I don't want to read too much about that. Let's see. Uh, it is believed that if you stand under the tree under Midsummer's Eve, you will see the fairy troop go by. It is also possible that the wooden lots used by the Celts to make divination were made from elder. Scots pine, beautiful pine tree. The divinatory meaning is seek an overview. The Scots pine is one of the oldest trees native to Britain. However, though our most significant contact with it today is probably at Christmas, when various pine or fir species are brought into the house and decorated, the tree once had a far wider significance. The idea of decorating a tree is itself a memory of a far older tradition in which a pine or one of its cousins was felled and decorated with shiny objects either as offerings to a particular god or as a reminder of the starry heavens caught in the tree's branches. The pine was also considered to be a strong protection for women in childbirth. 
This may well have given rise to the belief that babies were delivered by storks, since these birds especially love to nest in pine trees. One of the oldest glosses of the letter is loudest of groans, which is clearly connected to the act of giving birth. The pine is one of the woods the Celts considered especially appropriate to burn at midwinter. This is where we got the Yule log tradition from. Okay, next we have Gorse. The divinatory meaning is fertility wakes a fire in the mind. This refers not only to the earth's fertility or that of humans and animals, but also to the mind's productiveness for the green man suggests that the richness of human imagination awakens a fire in the mind. Gorse flowers virtually all year round, and wherever it is seen, its golden color is particularly heartening. The yellow flowers of the gorse in full bloom, along with its evergreen leaves, inevitably link it with the sun and life's eternal nature. The Celts revered gorse as sacred to Lug, the sun god, Indeed, in Brittany, the festival that celebrates him was known as the Festival of the Golden Gorse. Its excellence as fuel made it important in all celebrations where fires were lit. Hmm. Okay, next we have Heather. The divinatory meaning is luck takes many forms. We feel our mo at our most lucky when we are confident. It is only when we begin to doubt ourselves that good fortune seems to run out. Heather, especially white heather, is synonymous with good luck, potency, and longing. And when planted in a circle around fruit-bearing trees, as it still is in Scotland, the trees will produce far more fruit. Pink or purple heather is believed to be stained by the blood of the Pictish warriors who fought and died in Scotland and the borders. It is said that heather will not grow on the battlefield of Culloden Moor because of the brave warriors who fell there in 1746 in the cause of Scottish freedom. Very interesting. Okay. Like I said, there's a lot more information here, but obviously I can't read you the whole book. Here's White Poplar. Divinatory meaning is Animation is the pulse of life. Everything alive pulses with animation, just as the white poplar's leaves never come to rest but quiver and rustle, making the whole tree come alive, so the vital energy of the universe courses through us, affecting the way we live. White poplar is meant to have acquired its particular coloring when Hercules wore a crown made from its leaves as he descended into the underworld. The tops of the leaves were scorched by fire, while the undersides turned bright from reflecting the hero's radiance. Poplar is associated with resurrection. Classical tradition equates three trees with the triple aspects of the moon goddess. The aspen is the maiden, the white poplar, the mother, and the black poplar, the crone. Okay, moving along to you. And the divinatory meaning of the card. Perseverance leads to achievement. The perseverance associated with the you is that of all life, which continues in the face of overwhelming odds and grows stronger because of it. Much of the you's symbolism is concerned with transcendence, the transformation that arises from death. Death does not necessarily mean physical ending, more the end of one way of life and rebirth into a new one. Some yews are said to be as old as Stonehenge, and their evergreen nature marks them out as symbols of eternal life. The yew has an enduring quality and is said to transcend life and death. I know there are many yew trees uh, that are hundreds of years old, so that's probably why it's uh, chosen for... Um, the symbol of perseverance. Okay, next we're going to move on to the Aspen. The Green Man Wisdom associated with this card is where all are gathered, strength is strongest. Like the poplar, the Aspen is known as a shivering tree, 
and because of this in folklore they are often linked with healing ailments that cause people to shake. Oh, interesting. The protecting tree, the aspen's other abiding quality was that of protection, especially against the fairy kind. The Greek for aspen was aspis, also meaning shield, and like the poplar, was used to make shields imbued with magical properties. Placing an aspen leaf on the tongue was supposed to bestow eloquence of the kind normally only given by the fairy queen herself. Aspen also gives shelter to animals, and for this reason was considered particularly sacred to shamans whose spirit helpers often take animal forms. Just a beautiful, beautiful card, and I love the stones in some of these oracle cards. Just lovely. The next card is the spindle. The green man wisdom associated with this spindle is destiny moves us to do great things. The spindle gets its name from its primary purpose, the making of spindles for use in weaving. This has given it a powerful association with the weaving of destiny, bringing into its sphere the deities connected with the sacred arts of spinning and weaving. Curiously, the round pink berries that decorate the spindle resemble, resemble miniature pomegranates, which when opened up, contain tiny orange colored seeds. The symbol of the pomegranate is well known from the story of Persephone who in Greek tradition became the goddess of the underworld after she was stolen away by Hades. Once again the links are with fate and destiny, both of which are controlled by the underworld deities. By spinning a thread to guide her in the underworld, goddess Hecate led Persephone's mother Demeter to her daughter. Ariadne similarly spun a thread of red wool to help the hero Theseus to escape from the fearsome Minotaur. Very interesting. In many myths, weaving goddesses were said to spin the very fabric of creation. So there you have it, associated with spinning, and therefore it's called spindle. All right, next we come to honeysuckle. And the divinatory meaning, the green man wisdom, is wisdom hides in secret places. So the presence of honeysuckle in a reading suggests that a wealth of meaning lies hidden, ready to be uncovered and explored. Honeysuckle folklore centers around love and courtship. Uh, hung over the door of a house, honeysuckle kept unwanted visitors out and good luck in. And over the entrance to the cowshed, it protected cattle from milk theft by the fairies. Honeysuckle is famed for its climbing properties. Uh, alternative names for this letter include the other members of the honeysuckle family, I won't go through them. Honeysuckle's divinatory meaning, secrecy, may derive from its connection with these shrubs, which are associated with secret hidden knowledge. The secrecy of the honeysuckle becomes the quest for secret knowledge. So there you have the honeysuckle. Next we have gooseberry. In various parts of Britain, we hear of the gooseberry wife, who sometimes appears as a large hairy caterpillar and is used as a threat for badly behaved children. If you go out at night, the gooseberry wife will get you, is a saying found on the Isle of Man. Oh, interesting. The green man wisdom associated with this card is the ancestors walked the way before you. This card indicates that you have the right to draw on the collective wisdom of those who have walked the path before you. The fruit of the gooseberry was once used to ease women in labor, so helping it to form its traditional association with childbirth. The association of the gooseberry with ancestral lore presumably derives from this connection with birthing, for it is said to bring the heritage of the ancestors into the newborn infant. So there is the gooseberry. I love the cauldron in this image. Wonderful. Next we have the beach. The green man wisdom is what lies beyond the threshold. The presence of beach in a reading suggests you should cross the threshold that is challenging you, gain experience from the unknown, seek revelation, and increase your knowledge. The beauty and femininity of the beech is obvious. Traditionally, it is called the Queen of the Woods, sharing place of honor with the kingly oak. 
local British traditions associated with serpents, probably because of its serpentine root systems, which are revealed by root erosion when they are planted on hills or slopes. Behind this, again, lurks the notion of the wise serpent giving knowledge to those who ask for it. Thin leaves of beech wood are said to have been found, bound together to form the first book, which is certainly in line with its central association with writing and the transmission of lore. The Anglo-Saxon word for beech was bach, which became book. In German, buch is beech, and buch is book, while the Swedish word bach means both book and beech. Well, a book, bach, beech. These associations have led to the tree being associated with gods of learning. Dried beech leaves were used to stuff mattresses in France until as recently as the 19th century. The soft whispering noise produced when these were lain upon prompted them to be dubbed speaking beds. Sleeping on one of these and asking a question before falling asleep meant that one received a wise answer in the night. So there you have all 25 of the cards. The beach. I love that. Look at that beautiful image. So Will Worthington, of course, has produced a gorgeous deck here. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. It's a little longer than I normally would do, um, but I thought it would be enjoyable to hear a little bit about the lore associated with these trees in the Green Man deck. So have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.